This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.slimcentral.com forward slash donate. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddini wa ba'd. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his entire household and every single one of them, the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and may we be all blessed. My brothers and sisters in Islam, as you all know, we are at the door of the month of Ramadan. And as you all know, we will all be fasting and we will be engaging in lots of recitation of the Qur'an and we will be engaging in lots of extra voluntary prayer at night. And we all would like to increase our good deeds during the month of Ramadan because we know of the multiplication of these good deeds during this beautiful month. My brothers and sisters, what is important is for us to bear in mind that a certain condition is necessary for us to be able to have these acts of worship accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the primary condition is that we need to be sincere. We do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we do an act of worship, we should do it in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we do it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be able to achieve much more and we will be able to have our deeds benefit us the day we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order for that to happen, we need to have a clean heart. The heart needs to be cleansed. And sometimes this heart happens to be unclean because of the feelings we have against one another as Muslimin. So I want to invite you prior to the beautiful month of Ramadan to take a moment to look at your heart and to ask yourself, How do I feel regarding my fellow Muslims, my brothers and sisters, and humankind at large? Is my heart upon a good condition? Do I have the love for my fellow Muslims that I am supposed to have? Have I tried to solve and resolve the matters and disputes that I may have within my family, within my community, within those who perhaps mix with me as a person in my business or workplace and so on? If not, I suggest very strongly that we do something about it. It is about time we sorted our matters. My brothers and sisters, we want to enter the month of Ramadan with the pleasure of Allah. And we want to exit the month of Ramadan later on with the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How will that be possible when we have not sorted out our own matters? If you take a look at the the night of decree, that is a very powerful night in the month of Ramadan, it is known as Laylatul Qadr. Do you know that there was a time when the knowledge of this night was being sent down to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specifically? So he was going to be told exactly what night it is. But because there were two people who were arguing and disputing at that particular moment, the angel was instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to withhold the knowledge of that particular night. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that because of the disputes of these people, now the knowledge of this night has been kept by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to search for it in the last 10 nights, the odd nights from amongst them. So this shows us that sometimes when we are disputing amongst one another, it causes a lot of spiritual loss. It causes loss in terms of the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why should we let that happen? It is about time we looked into our hearts and we cleanse them for the sake of Allah. We remove in it hatred that we have. We remove in it or from it jealousy that we have. Some people become jealous of others because they have a high position. Some people become jealous of others because of their wealth or their family members or any form of success that Allah has given them. Do not be jealous, my brothers and sisters of one another. It causes a big problem. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, إِنَّ الْحَسَدَ يَأْكُلُ الْحَسَنَاتِ كَمَا تَأْكُلُ النَّارُ الْحَطَبِ Indeed, jealousy will eat away at your other good deeds in the same way that the fuel eats away at a dry log. So just like you have a dry firewood and the fuel would eat it very fast, 
if we have jealousy in our hearts, the other deeds that we have done in terms of goodness, they will be eaten away in that particular condition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save God every single one of us from this. My brothers and sisters, a beautiful month of Ramadan. We should be getting up early and we should be having something to eat just before the commencement of the meal. And this is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says in suhoor, and suhoor meaning the initial pre-fasting light meal that we have. He says there is barakah in it. There is blessings in that food. So even if you get up to have a little bit, there is greater blessing in that than to remain asleep and get up for Salatul Fajr. As Muslims in the month of Ramadan, it's important that we get up before Salatul Fajr, before the time of Fajr, and have, even if it means a little bit of water, even if it means a few dates or some light meal, because there is barakah in it. Remember, when we have a heavy meal very early, we will become hungry very quick as well, because this digestive system works in a way that it begins to digest the food. And if there is a lot of food, it requires more energy. And so much happens. By the time midday comes, you are already very hungry. So that is why when we have this initial pre-fasting meal, make sure that it is a light meal for barakah purposes, for purposes of fulfilling the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thereafter, we should enjoy the fast. And let us abstain from saying during the fasting that, you know, I'm very hungry. This fast is very hard. It is very hot and humid in Malaysia and so on. Abstain from that. Enjoy the fast for the sake of Allah and say, Ya Allah, at least you have allowed us. You have allowed us to break the fast every day. When I was a little bit younger, we used to speak to some of the people and say, we fast for one month. And the non-Muslims used to think that means for one whole month you don't eat. And they said, well, in two or three days you will be dead. And we start thinking to ourselves, well, do you know what is going to happen here? The truth is, you and I know the gift of Allah. It is from dawn to dusk. That's all. From pre-sunrise, pre-sunrise, meaning the time of Fajr, right up to the time of Maghrib. That is not too much. Still, you have all night to eat. But remember another point, when we are opening our fast at the end of the day, open it with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make a prayer because that is a time of acceptance of your prayers. So if you have your needs that Allah has kept you with, it is important that you spend a moment to say, Oh Allah, help me, help the Muslims across the globe, those who don't have food at all. I have food, but I have abstained from it for your sake. Let me reach out to those who have nothing, become charitable. The hadith of the Prophet wasallam. it is reported that he was a very generous person, extremely generous. But he was even more generous in the month of Ramadan when Jibreel alayhi salam used to come to him and they used to recite the Quran together. So he was so generous that the hadith says it is like a wind that blows. When you have a strong wind that blows, every one of us will feel the wind, although it is one wind, subhanallah. So the generosity of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Ramadan was like the wind. Everyone used to see it. I want to draw your attention to generosity in Ramadan. Generosity is with your character, your conduct. Do not allow your temper to overtake you in this month. Some people are hungry. So when they are hungry, they get angry. The English saying is, a hungry man is an angry man. But that is not a saying in Islam. We are supposed to restrain ourselves. This is why the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, this month has come to you. A beautiful month where the heads of the devils, you know, the shayateen, the, the chiefs of the devils are actually tied up. The doors of hell are closed. The doors of heaven are wide open. And a caller is calling out to say, O oh, you who wants to do good, come forward. And O oh, you who intends evil, control yourself, restrain yourself, throw it back. So when we want to get angry in the afternoon with our spouses, with our colleagues, with anyone else, control yourself in a way that you will be able to have a good deed in return or as a result. If I really want to get upset and I control myself, that's a good deed. I'm earning a free reward. Nobody can see, nobody can notice. But I know I was feeling like I really want to say something, but I held back. Allah says, you held back, you get a reward. Especially when you are fasting, you get a bigger reward. So be generous with your character by 
inquiring about people, by saying good words to your family members, by spending a little bit of time with your children, take time to teach them some goodness in the month of Ramadan, there will be barakah in it. This is how we welcome the beautiful month. You want to do good? Come forth, come forward, your good deeds are multiplied. If a person is engaging in evil or bad, it is going to be something that will be very dangerous because in the same way that goodness is multiplied in the month of Ramadan, the evil that is done in this blessed month, knowing its sanctity, is really playing a game with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want to do that. You know, Allah says, ذَٰلِكَ وَمَن يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِن تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Indeed, those who sanctify the sanctuaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a sign of the piety of the heart, as a sign of taqwa, the fearing of Allah. When Allah declares a certain place as being a sacred place, you must consider it sacred. If a person commits a sin in Malaysia, it is a sin. But if a person commits the same sin in Mecca, it is multiplied. Because Mecca is a sacred place. But if someone says, look, I will not commit this sin, we are in Mecca, how dare you do this? It shows that they have respect for something that Allah has granted sacredness to. I'm not saying that we should be engaging in sin far away from Mecca, but I'm just giving you an example. The same applies if a person wants to engage in sin during Ramadan, whilst they are fasting, they are playing a game. They are daring Allah. Because Allah says, this is the month of multiplying your good. This is the mon month of engaging in extra acts of worship. And we are saying, okay, I'm going to engage in sin as well in this month. May Allah not do that to us. May we be saved. This is why my brothers and sisters, the night in the month of Ramadan is not for the clubbing. And it is not for enjoying and passing time, doing things that are futile and committing sin in the left and the right direction. No. The night in the month of Ramadan is known to be a night to liven up. Ihya'ul layl. That means to make your night alive. Alive by doing what? Read your Quran. Engage in taraweeh. Taraweeh is long. It is lengthy. But it is known as something that will give the true believers raha. Raha means calmness. Or should I say that rest that they need. That is taraweeh. So let us engage in taraweeh with a good heart. By when we say Allahu Akbar, we forget everything else. We are plugged in with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I really hope and I pray that we can have this month of Ramadan with a difference. We are so lucky and fortunate to be speaking this Friday on this beautiful topic of welcoming Ramadan. And I'm giving you a few hints and tips from what we've learned as Muslimin over the years from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to engage in, in this month of Ramadan. Also what is important, my brothers and sisters, try your best to go through the meanings of the Qur'an in this month because the month is known as the month of the Qur'an as well. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس. I'm sure we know this verse. It is شهر رمضان, the month of Ramadan, in which Allah has revealed the Quran as a guidance for man. So it is important for us all to ensure that we go through the meanings of this beautiful Quran that Allah subhanahu wa taala can grant us uh, at least the reward of going through His Word and His Book. Also remember, the recitation is of utmost importance. A lot of us, we need to improve the pronunciation of the Arabic language recitation of the Quran. Use this beautiful month of Ramadan to improve this recitation by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we don't do it in this month, when will we do it? So improve your recitation, recite melodiously, sit with those who know and try and learn from them. Your reward will be multiplied. Give much importance to the Quran. As I said a few moments ago, important to also spend time with your family members. It is important to take time with your children. Show them the value of Ramadan. Ramadan is a month where we should be showing that we are together as a family unit. This is a responsibility for Allah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. So that when we die, our generations will know that Ramadan, this is how you should spend it. 
I'm sure with us who are seated here and those who are listening, I'm very, very sure that we know how our fathers and forefathers and family members used to spend the month of Ramadan. So we are so happy and so fortunate that we can also spend it, in fact, in an improved way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness during this beautiful month of Ramadan. Another important issue, when we are praying for ourselves in Ramadan, asking Allah to open the doors of goodness for us, it is very important to ask for goodness for others as well. Do not be selfish. There are people who are struggling across the globe for so many reasons. Some for political reasons. Some they are being attacked for no reason whatsoever. They don't even know why they are being attacked. Some are homeless. Some do not have food. Some do not have clothing. Think of them. At least pray for them. If you cannot reach out with a small donation into the boxes, the minimum is to pray for them. So do not be selfish when it comes to praying where we only pray for ourselves. Oh Allah, give me, give me, give me, and we forget everyone else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to reach out to others in a beautiful way, at least that our prayers can reach them, and at least that their prayers perhaps would reach us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really and truly make this month very easy for us all, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness throughout this blessed month of Ramadan. Also, a very interesting point is, my brothers and sisters, when we stay away from food during the day, it does not mean that at night we need to now do qada for what we missed during the day. Some people think that you miss the food during the day, so at night you must eat double. That is wrong. That is something that is a very big mistake. Some people, the day of Eid, they eat so much that they get sick. It is important for us to know this month of Ramadan, generally, cut down on your food, eat light, you will feel very healthy, you will detox your system. And that is something that is needed. So much so that I know of non-believers who fast as well because they say it is very healthy. What about us? We are believers. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Encourage the young and the old to fast. And let's try, inshallah, to do it in a way that we thank Allah. We please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he concentrated more on al-aswadan. Al-aswadan means the two black things. What are the two black things? One is referring to water. Water is colorless. So obviously if you have something black behind it, it looks black. And the dates. The dates are also known as al-aswad, which means something black. It is known as al-aswadan. He used to concentrate on these two things a lot. Sometimes even outside Ramadan. So we believe that part of the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa food was water and dates. If you have some dates, partake of them. They are very high in iron. They are very high in fiber. And they have lots of nutritious nu nutritions in them. Very nutritious food. And water is extremely important because in Ramadan, we would become dehydrated very quickly if we do not drink enough water. So throughout the night, perhaps you can sip your water. As you are closing the fast early morning, you can actually have a glass of water with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we open the fast also, we can partake within or from that particular water. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Brothers and sisters, these are just some of the beautiful pointers to remind you of the first First point I started with, let us cleanse the heart. The heart needs to be clean. Remove enmity that you have against one another. Solve your family problems. Go out of your way to say sorry even when you are not wrong, if that is what is going to solve the problem. Because Allah will write it next to your name. Sometimes we are not wrong, but we have a dispute. The brother is being stubborn. You go out and say, look my brother, I am sorry. It's okay, no problem. You are my brother, let me hug you. I don't have time, really. And I don't have space in my heart for this enmity. Enmity actually makes you sick. It makes you unhealthy. It gives you a burden on your shoulder. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up our hearts and to make us from those who can realize and understand the value of this beautiful month of Ramadan. Because it is only the value of this beautiful month of Ramadan that will be in our hearts such that we will be able to, inshallah, benefit from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us from these few words. I end with this and I hope that we've all been of... Inshallah, attentive ears, and not only that, but we will be able to practice some that is preached.